special feature episode, all dialogue generated by Google Bard. So Bob, I was thinking about the other day when we were talking about the rogue eye. I don't want to talk about that. But it's important. We need to make sure that it's not still out there. I know. But I can't help but think that it's still watching us. Waiting for its chance to strike. Quiet on set. Welcome back to Earth. Today's headlines include... What's this? It looks like a package. The treasure is hidden in a secret room. The clues are all around you. What treasure? I don't know. But I think we should find out. And that's all for our headlines today. Stay tuned for more Earth after the break. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. I think it's important. Okay. But be careful. I will. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this. Don't worry, Debbie. Alice is a professional. She'll be fine. Thank you, Bob. I was kidding, Alice. Me too. But we have to trust Alice. Welcome back to 24-7 Newsroom. I'm Charlie. I'm Bob. And I'm Alice. Today's top story, why we are what we are. This article from BBC News takes a look at the latest research into human evolution and behavior. The article argues that our gen, our environment, and our cultural play a role in shaping who we are. The article also discusses some of the challenges that we face as a species, such as climate change and equality. But it ends on a hopeful note arguing that we have the power to shape our own future. Here's a harsh but relevant punchline, if we don't like who we are, we can always change. But if we don't know who we are, we're screwed. That's a good one, Alice. So, what do you think? Are we doomed to be who we are? Or do we have the power to change? I think we have the power to change, but it's not easy. It takes hard work and dedication. I agree. But I think it's worth it. So, what are you going to do to change the world? I'm going to keep writing about it. I think it's important to have conversation about this issue. I'm going to keep trying to be a better person. I think it's important to set a good example. And I'm going to keep laughing. I think it's important to have a sense of humor, even in the face of adversity. That's a good plan, Charlie. I agree. Well, that's all for the top story today. Stay tuned for more 24 7 news from after the break. Okay, that. That's a wrap for segment one. Great job, everyone. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I'm glad you guys liked it. So, what are you guys going to do during the commercial break? I'm going to go check out the crew again. I still don't understand them. I am going to go talk to Carl. I think I might be able to help us figure them out. I'm going to go get some coffee. I'm starting to get a headache. This is hopeless. I don't know what this clue means. Hey, Carl. I was wondering if you could help me with something. Sure, what is it? I'm trying to figure out these clues. Do you have any idea what they mean? Hmm, let me take a look. I think I know what they mean. They're a code. A code? Yes. They're a code that leads to a secret treasure. A secret treasure? Yes. But it's not going to be easy to find. The code is very complicated. So, how are we going to solve it? I'm not sure. But I think we need to work together. Okay. I mean. Good. Let's get started. Special feature episode, all dialogue generated by Google Bard. Welcome back to 24-7 Newsroom. 
We are here today to discuss the latest news from around the world. Our top story today is about Ford Motor Co. S plans to lay off several hundred salaried employees. This is a sign of the times, as the automotive industry is facing a number of challenges, including the transition to electric vehicles. Ford is not the only automaker that is facing layoffs. General Motors also announced layoffs earlier this year. These layoffs are a reminder that the economy is still fragile, and that even big companies are not immune to the challenges of the current environment. However, it's also important to remember that the automotive industry is still a major driver of the global economy. And as the industry transitions to electric vehicles, there will be new opportunities for jobs. So, while these layoffs are a setback, they are not necessarily a sign of doom and gloom for the automotive industry. We'll continue to monitor the situation and bring you the latest update. I think this is a sign that the automotive industry is in trouble. I disagree. I think this is just a temporary setback. But how can you say that? Ford is laying off hundreds of employees. Because the automotive industry is going through a major transition. We're moving away from internal combustion engine and towards electric vehicles. And that's going to be disruptive. But that doesn't mean that the industry is going to die. There will still be a need for cars and trucks. Of course there will. But the industry is going to have to change. And that's going to mean some job loss. I guess we we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Yes, we will. Okay, that's a wrap for segment two. Great job, everyone. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. I'm glad you guys liked it. So, what are you guys going to do during the commercial break? I'm going to go check out the crew again. I still don't understand them. I am going to go talk to Carl. I think I might be able to help us figure them out. I'm going to go get some coffee. I'm starting to get a headache. This is Opeless. I don't know what this crew means. Hey. Carl, I was wondering if you could help me with something. Sure, what is it? I'm trying to figure out these clues. Do you have any idea what they mean? Hmm, let me take a look. I think I know what they mean. They're a code. A code? Yes, they're a code that leads to a secret treasure. A secret treasure? Yes, but it's not going to be easy to find. The code is very complicated. So, how are we going to solve it? I'm not sure. But I think we need to work together. Okay. I mean. Good. Let's get started. Special feature episode, all dialogue generated by Google Bard. Welcome back to 24-7 Newsroom. We are here today to discuss the latest news from around the world. Our top story today is about the increasing salinity of the water in Paso Severino, Uruguay. This is a serious problem, as it could have a number of negative consequences for the people who live in the area. The Ministry of Health has issued some recommendations for people who live in the area. They say that people with chronic kidney disease, heart failure, cirrhosis, or who are pregnant should avoid drinking the water from Paso Severino. For people who don't have any of these conditions, the Ministry of Health says that they can continue to drink the water. But they should also drink some bottled water. This is a reminder that we need to be careful about the quality of the water we drink. We should always check the water quality before we drink it. Especially if we're in an area where the water quality is not good. We'll continue to monitor this story and bring you the latest updates. This is a reminder that we need to be careful about the environment. We need to make sure that we don't pollute our water supply. Or we could end up with problems like this. I agree. We need to do everything we can to protect our water resources. We'll keep an eye on this story and let you know if there are any updates. I don't believe in curses. 
I think it's just a story that people tell to keep people away from their treasure. I don't know. I've heard some pretty convincing stories about curses. Well, we are not going to find out if it's real or not if we don't take the treasure. I'm not going to take any chance. I'm going to leave the treasure where it is. I'm with you. I don't want to be cursed. Okay, good. That's enough for segment three. Great job, everyone. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I'm glad you guys liked it. So, what are you guys going to do during the commercial break? I'm going to go check out the crew again. I still don't understand them. I am going to go talk to Carl. I think I might be able to help us figure them out. I'm going to go get some coffee. I'm starting to get a headache. This is hopeless. I don't know what this crew means. Hey, Carl. I was wondering if you could help me with something. Sure, what is it? I'm trying to figure out these clues. Do you have any idea what they mean? Hmm, let me take a look. I think I know what they mean. They're a code. A code? Yes. They're a code that leads to a secret treasure. A secret treasure? Yes. But it's not going to be easy to find. The code is very complicated. So, how are we going to solve it? I'm not sure. But I think we need to work together. Okay. I mean. Good. Let's get started. I don't know what to think. On the one hand, I don't want to be cursed. But on the other hand, I don't want to just leave the treasure there. I know what you mean. It's a tough decision. I think we should keep the treasure a secret for now. We can try to figure out what to do with it later. That's probably a good idea. We don't want to get anyone else involved in this. Agreed. Let's keep it to ourselves for now. Welcome back to 24-7 Newsroom. We are here today to discuss the latest news from around the world. Our top story today is about the new rules for obtaining vanity license plat in Uzbekistan. As you know, Uzbekistan has a long history of issuing vanity license plates, and the new rules are designed to make the process more fair and transparent. Under the new rules, the government will be auctioning off vanity license plates, and the highest bidder will be awarded the plat. This is a major change from the previous system, where vanity plates were often given out to government officials and other well-connected individuals. The new rules are expected to go into effect in the next few months, and will be sure to keep you updated on the progress. In other news, the crew of the spaceship Earth has been experiencing some strange and disturbing events. They've been hearing noise in the night, seeing shadows moving in the corner of their eyes, and feeling like they're being watched. They're starting to believe that the ghost of the previous owner of the treasure is real. And that the curse is real. They're not sure what to do, but they're determined to find out what's going on. We'll keep you updated on this story as it develops. So, what do you think is going on? I don't know, but I'm starting to think that the ghost is real. I don't believe in ghosts, but I'm starting to have my doubts. I'm just glad I'm not the only one who's seeing and hearing these things. I think we need to do some research on this. See if there's any history of hauntings on this ship. Good idea. I'll start looking into it. I'm so glad we're not alone in this. Me too. I don't know what I would do if I was going through this all by myself. I don't know what to think. On the one hand, I don't want to believe in ghosts. But on the other hand, I can't deny that something weird is going on. I know what you mean. It's a tough situation. I think we should keep investigating. Maybe if we find out more about the ghost, we can figure out how to get rid of it. That's probably a good idea. We don't want to live in fear. Agreed. Let's keep at it. Okay, cut. That's enough for segment four. Great job, everyone. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. 
I am glad you guys liked it. So, what do you guys think is going on? I don't know. But I am starting to think that the ghost is real. I don't believe in ghosts, but I'm starting to have my doubt. I'm just glad I'm not the only one who's seeing and hearing these things. Me too. I was starting to think I was going crazy. I think we need to do some research on this. See if there's any history of hauntings on this ship. Good day. I'll start looking into it. I'm so glad we're not alone in this. Me too. I don't know what I would do if I was going through this all by myself. I know what you mean. It's been really scary. I don't know what to think. On the one hand, I don't want to believe in ghosts. But on the other hand, I can't deny that something weird is going on. I know what you mean. It's a tough situation. I think we should keep investigating. Maybe if we find out more about the ghost, we can figure out how to get rid of it. That's probably a good idea. We don't want to live in fear. Agreed. Let's keep at it. Welcome back from commercial. In our last segment, we discussed the strange and disturbing events that have been happening to us, which we believe are caused by the ghost of the previous owner of the treasure we found. We decided to keep investigating the strange events. Well, we're back, and we're ready to talk about some lesser known trivia from the country of Vanuatu. Did you know that Vanuatu is home to the world's the largest collection of wooden pennies? That's right. Alice. And they're not just any old wooden pennies. They're carved from the finest hardwoods and decorated with intricate design. I'm not sure what to say about that. But I guess it's one way to show your appreciation for the male form. Well, it's certainly a unique way to celebrate culture. And it's not the only thing that makes Vanuatu special. Did you know that the country is also home to the world's the largest cava bowl? That's right, Alice. And it's not just any old cava ball. It's made from a single piece of giant clam shell and can hold up to 1,000 liters of cava. That's a lot of cava. I wonder how many people it takes to drink that much. I don't know, Charlie. But I'm sure it would be a pretty wild party. Well, those are just a few of the lesser known trivia facts about Vanuatu. But there's so much more to learn about this fascinating country. So if you're ever looking for a unique travel destination, I highly recommend checking out Vanuatu. Thanks for those facts, Alice. And now, here's the key takeaway from the article. Vanuatu is a country with a rich culture and history. It's also home to some of the most unique and interesting trivia facts in the world. So if you're looking for a place to learn something new and have a wild time, Vanuatu is the place for you. I've been doing some research, and I think I've found a way to break the curse. Really? What is it? Well, it's a bit of a long story. But basically, we need to find the ghost grave and perform a ritual to release its spirit. That sounds dangerous. It is. But it's the only way to break the curse. I know it's a risk. But I think it's worth it. Okay, let's do it. This is it. This is the ghost grave. Okay, let's do this. That's great. So, what do we have to do? Well, first we need to find the ghost grave. And then we need to perform a ritual to release its spirit. That sounds dangerous. It is. But it's the only way to break the curse. Okay, let's do it. Wait. You can't just leave. We're still on the air. Oh, right. Sorry. Okay, you're back on. Special feature episode, all dialogue generated by Google Bard. Welcome back to Earth. 
In our last segment, we discussed the strange and disturbing events that have been happening to us, which we believe are caused by the ghost of the previous owner of the treasure we found. We decided to keep investigating the strange events. Meanwhile, the crew tries to find a way to break the cause. They research the cause and find a way to lift it. They perform the ritual and the cause is broken. The ghost is gone. The crew is free. They have learned a valuable lesson about the dangers of greed and the importance of friendship. Well, we're back, and we're ready to talk about some lesser known trivia from the country of Venezuela. Did you know that Venezuela is home to the world's largest waterfall? That's right, Alice. Angel Falls is an incredible sight. It's over 2,600 feet tall. I've always wanted to see Angel Falls. It's on my bucket list. You should definitely go if you get the chance. It's an amazing experience. But Venezuela is also a country with a dark history. It's been through a lot of political turmoil and violence. That's true. Venezuela has had a rough few decades. But I think it's important to remember that the people of Venezuela are resilient. They have survived a lot and they are still fighting for a better future. I agree. The people of Venezuela are an inspiration to us all. Well, those are just a few of the lesser known facts about Venezuela. But there's so much more to learn about this fascinating country. So if you're ever looking for a unique travel destination, I highly recommend checking out Venezuela. Thanks for those facts, Alice. And now, let's talk about the headline of this article, Venezuelan President's Home Summit to Discuss Regional Integration. That's a pretty interesting headline. I wonder what they're going to talk about. It looks like they're going to discuss a number of issues, including the restoration of the Union of South American Nations. The search for the remains of victims of Colombia's armed conflict. And the normalization of relations between Venezuela and Argentina. Those are all important issues. I hope they can make some progress on them. Me too. It would be great to see Venezuela become a more stable and prosperous country. I agree. The people of Venezuela deserve better. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching us. And thanks to our guest. Alice and Bob, for joining us. It was our pleasure. We'll see you next time. Welcome back to Earth. In our last segment, we discussed the harsh history of Venezuela and the efforts of the people to rebuild their country. We also discussed the article Venezuelan President's Hope Summit to discuss regional integration. In this segment, he'd like to do a deep dive on the article. The article discusses how the president of Venezuela, Argentina, and Bolivia met to discuss regional integration. They discussed a number of issues, including the restoration of the Union of South American Nations, the search for the remains of victims of Colombia's armed conflict, and the normalization of relations between Venezuela and Argentina. It's interesting that they're discussing regional integration, given the current political climate in Venezuela. But it's also important to remember that the people of Venezuela are resilient. And they're still fighting for a better future. I agree, the people of Venezuela deserve a better life. And I hope that this talk can help to bring about positive change. Let's take a closer look at some of the specific issues that were discussed at the summit. First, the president discussed the restoration of the Union of South American Nations. The UNASUR was a regional organization that was created in 28. However, it was dissolved in 2019 due to political tension between its member states. The president at the summit expressed their support for the restoration of the UNASUR. And they agreed to work together to make it happen. That's good news. The UNASUR was an important organization. And this restoration would be a positive step for the region. The president also discussed the search for the remains of victims of Colombia's armed conflict. The Colombian armed conflict has been going on for over 50 years. And it has left a legacy of violence and displacement. 
The President at the Summit agreed to work together to search for the Roman of the victims of the conflict, and to provide justice for their families. That's a very important issue. The families of the victims deserve to know what happened to their loved ones. And they deserve justice. Finally, the President discussed the normalization of relations between Venezuela and Argentina. Venezuela and Argentina have had a strained relationship in recent years. However, the President at the summit expressed their desire to normalize relations between the two countries. They agreed to work together to address the issues that have been dividing them. And to build a more cooperative relationship. That's good news. Venezuela and Argentina are important countries in the region. And it's important for them to work together. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching us. And thanks to Urge, Alice and Bob, for joining us. It was our pleasure. We'll see you next time. Special feature episode, all dialogue generated by Google Bard. So, what did you think of the show tonight? I thought it was pretty good. The segment on the Venezuelan summit was interesting, and I liked the way they explored the implications of falling gold prices for the global economy. Yeah, I agree. The show was pretty solid overall. But I did have a few quibbles. Like what? Well, for one thing, I thought Alice was a little too preachy in her segment on the harsh history of Venezuela. She kept hammering home the point that humans are a violent and destructive species. And it started to get a little old. I didn't really mind. I think it's important to be aware of the dark side of human nature, even if it's not always pleasant to think about. Fair enough. But I also thought the segment on the gold market was a little too dry. It was a lot of numbers and jargon, and it didn't really hold my attention. I can see that. But I thought it was important to provide some context for the discussion of the Venezuelan summit. The falling gold prices are a sign of a changing economic landscape, and it's important to understand the implications of that. I guess you're right. But I still think the show could have been a little more balanced. There was a lot of talk about the dark side of humanity, but not much about the good side. That's a fair point. But I think the show did a good job of showing the complexity of human nature. There's both good and bad in all of us, and I think the show did a good job of capturing that. I guess you're right. But I still think the show could have been a little more optimistic. There was a lot of talk about the challenges facing humanity, but not much about the potential for a better future. I think that's a valid criticism. But I think the show did a good job of showing that even in the face of challenges, there is still hope for a better future. I guess you're right. But I still think the show could have been a little more funny. There was a lot of serious talk, but not much humor. I think that's a matter of personal taste. I thought the show was funny enough, but I can see how some people might find it too serious. Well, I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree. Agreed.